Hey guys, what's happening? So, I wanted to start building an ultra, hopefully energy efficient uh, firewall here. Full featured firewall. So, when I mean full featured firewall, I mean uh, something that's obviously Linux based, uh, deep packet inspection, intrusion detection, VPNs. Um, yeah, I'm currently running an i3, and my preferred firewall is Sophos XG or UTM. But I've also used PFSense a lot too, so I mean, it could be either or. So some of the requirements, requirements that it needs to be an Intel based PC. And I actually have this um, old phone system here. It's a Sangoma Switchbox 80. And this is actually got this from a customer. The hard drive was actually failing, so it's no longer used. But I've already kind of worked on this a little bit last night. And I'll show you what I figured out. Um, but it's a pretty cool motherboard. It's an Intel Atom base motherboard. Turn the on so you can see it better. Um, I actually, I put that in last night, the uh, MSATA flash. So I originally had booted off the hard drive, the 2.5 inch hard drive. And it originally came with the 4 gig of RAM. Then I upgraded to 8 gig of RAM. Um, but it's an Intel Atom, uh, I think it's an N2800. Uh, 2 core, 4 thread processor. Um, but there's a couple unique features about this motherboard which make it interesting off more more interesting than my other uh, Intel Atom boards. Um, but this thing was designed to run on a flat panel display. Uh, from what I looked on the specs, it's made by Intel, the motherboard is. Uh, but it has like an M-Data logo, a splash screen that fires up. But one of the very unique things about this motherboard is that right now there's a cover on it, and you can see it over here. But that part right there, you can see that. That is actually a 12 volt, uh, see what it says, anywhere from 9 to 18 volt uh, external power plug. So you don't need to have this extra power supply. And I'm going to be actually getting rid of a lot of this stuff that I don't use in here to bring down the wattage. I'm hoping to get down to about 20 watts running um, because the, the processor itself is 6.5 watt TDP. Um, got a couple of fans running. But I, I really like the rack mount case. And I've already actually started playing with the LCD. And I got that to program. So right now I have Windows 10 installed on it. Just because the software that, you know, that they have to program this thing uh, is Windows based. So I've already changed the logo or changed the, the, the text on there. But let me show you why I'm actually uh, doing this. Um. Alright, so that's why I'm actually doing this. My power bill has gone up to $400 a month. Um, so it used to be around 300, 350, um, but I have all these like prehistoric draws all around my garage. I have Raspberry Pis running for my 3D printers, uh, so I want I want to get this back down to 300 dollars a month. I mean, I live in Southern California, which is like horrible power rates here, um, but actually it kind of put me over the edge when I started CPU mining, and uh, I'll do another video about the CPU mining because it's definitely a bust. It's not worth it. The amount of money you have to spend in power, like these things actually, this is, a, this is a 5950X, pulls about 125 watts. So that pulls as much power as like one of these high-end like GPUs. You know, like a, like a, like a 30, uh, 3070 right here, pulls the same amount of wattage. And the whole thing, all my CPU mining, all my CPUs mining together, only bringing about 50 bucks a month. Total bust. And it cost me thousands of dollars, I have like 1500 into it, so. Um, lesson learned. Won't do the CPU mine again. Um, let me show my current setup here. Uh, I don't actually have any of my main servers here, so if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know all my servers are in a data center colo. But I just keep my I keep my basic file server file Plex server here at my house. Uh, that's actually running in Sophos XG. It's a Core i3, a little mi mini or micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard. Cable modem. Cisco 48 port switch, I'm running some new wires for some cameras, adding cameras. The white wires are uh, camera, the blue are data. And um, Alright, so back to this build right here. So um, one of the things I have here is, I'm actually, I already ordered another network card, but I mean, obviously to make a firewall you're going to need to have two network interfaces. So this actually one came with an onboard network interface, and it's Intel. Uh, and this is actually a Broadcom. So it actually need, need a second network card, but it's not good to mix match the chips. Um, so it's not good to like go from like Realtek to Intel or Broadcom to Realtek, or 
you should always keep the chips the same if you can like Broadcom to Broadcom, Intel to Intel so I, I would actually order a, a sort of like a sort of like a server NIC network interface card or on Amazon 26 bucks but it's interesting because it's they use this server based uh, network chip an Intel chip but it's a dual network card I'll, I'll do more about the card when it gets in here but it's I had to find something that was PCI 1X here and most uh, server network based cards are like PCI uh, 8X so um, let me fire this up got it on Windows but I also have this hooked up to my power meter here so I know exactly what uh, my Android based uh, power meter so I know what this thing is actually consuming so the goal is 20 watts and I'm actually going to 3D print design like a cover because I'm going to remove that power supply and actually have it hooked because this thing actually was a surprise just actually powering this with a fan or thing is actually quite a parasitic draw because I mean this is a 250 watt ATX power supply and I don't need 250 watts yeah getting rid of the hard drive and just keeping this minimal basic stuff in here disabling all the extra stuff on board disable all the serial ports L2 printer ports com ports whatever you know all the extra stuff on this motherboard I'm not using will deactivate functions and ICs you know but uh, like I said, the LCD is kind of not necessary. I mean, that's going to use up probably a couple watts. I'll test it though. You know, because I'll hook, hooked up my watt meter. I'll unplug it, plug it back in. Then I'm kind of rambling here. But so I currently have Windows 10 on here, and um, like I said, I'm going to get the display work. I mean, I already have it working, but it's yeah. I, what I want to do with the display is I want to hopefully, if I can, read like CPU usage, um, like. Uh, Heat, you know, how hot it is in here, if it even does that. But it'd be nice to be able to see like a CPU uh, load on the front. All right, so here's my phone app. I've actually made several videos about this, but this is how I can see the power consumption of my mining rigs. And this one is my yellow spare. I use just to test power consumption. Um, so this thing's pulling 29.9 watts. Um, and this thing's actually basically pretty quiet. Um, but this thing, I, I can hear the power supply making noise. So that's really the I don't hear any noise coming from these fans, but... The cool thing is about these, is these are hopefully... I don't know if they're pulse width modulated. It's only two wires. Well, I'll look at them. But, um... I, mean, I guess the pulse width modulation would... Pulse width modulation would be done on the chip, I guess. You know, fan control. Um... But yeah, I'd like to get that down to 20 watts. So I'm going to take out this power supply. And I really don't, I mean, the power supply is only powering right here on the CPU connector. There's no 24 or 20 pin ATX connector. So I really don't even know what the... Because then they have this weird little power draw thing. Well, it's, it's an MSATA, but it's drawing power from the PCI bus. The power of this looks like the hard drive. Um... I mean, really, like I said, because this thing actually has the ability to have an external power supply, that will actually, because I can go to a lower amperage, you know, all I only need is, I mean, like a, like a 50 watt power supply. That's something I can actually do on a, on a heavy load, maybe like 50, 60 watt. I'll get one ready to that. But I don't need to actually have all this. So, I'm going to pull it out. And, as you can see, it has a sense wire. So, with this thing, actually, this is, this is like telling the power supply that it detected the motherboard. That's a little sense wire that basically says the thing's connected to the motherboard. So typically a power supply is not going to power on unless you have either this thing connected to a motherboard or like this sense wire. Alright. Um, light in the front. The switch. Yeah, that's the LCD screen. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to the windows, and uh, well, before I even do that, I'm going to take out the power supply. So if I can bring, oh, 31 watt now, so. Hmm. What I need to do is figure out what my Core i3 system is running, uh, how many watts that thing's pulling, because that thing's all solid state too, I have SSD drive in there. Um, but it's an i3, so I'm, I'm assuming it'd be pro it's still going to be pretty low, but not nearly as low as the Atom. Um, so this is actually the uh, how to control the LCD, but I'm not going to be writing Windows. And the problem is the Linux kernels that I'm going to be running. I'm going to be updating them constantly, so there's no you know sense of me putting the 
Linux-based software on there to control it. Um, but that little, it's called, uh, the, the LCD is made by Crystal Fonts. So, um, I'm just curious. Let's see how, how much it lowers it right now. So I'm going to unplug it. All right? So you little USB cable. I, mean, I think it's not exactly real time, but I, I don't think it would use a lot. I mean, like I said, I mean, Linux has kind of taken over the world because everything runs on Linux. I mean, that's a little ARM-based device right there, you know, ARM processor. And it's hard to say for sure how much this thing has taken. Um, I mean, it dropped down maybe like a 1 or 2 watt. Let's plug it back in. I know this video is going to be long and a lot of rambling. But what I was saying is, like, Linux has kind of taken over the world. Like, I'm messing with so many different embedded devices, like IP cameras, every little, de even, like, all my 3D printing stuff. Like, all these little devices in the LCDs have ARM-based processors that run on Linux. So, pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, it brought up probably, it takes about one watt of power. But... I mean, I don't know. If it sucks, I won't use it. I'll design, like, I'll 3D print a cover for it or something. But, um, yes, yeah, so I want to pull this out. I'm going to 3D print a cover slot. That way I don't have to just have a hole in the back. Try to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, the cool thing about this thing is that it's rack mounted, too, so I can put it in my small little rack there. You know what's interesting is I, I, I'm trying to figure out what the mindset of this is right here. I mean, because if you already have a power supply in here, why would you need to break off power from the PCI bus to power all this right here? Like, this thing was actually feeding this big mess. It was feeding the hard drive. Uh, I don't know if there's a table die, but it's feeding over here, too. So why would you need to do that when you actually have a power supply in here and you went through the, pro you went through the headache of doing the sense wire? I mean, even the, like the USB plug-in, right? Because originally this was plugged in over here, like that. Um, so you're pulling the LCD. I mean, because really the USB should be connected to the PCI bus, too. I mean, I'm going to flip it over to see if there's an IC on there. But I'm just trying to figure out the logic behind this whole M2, you know, converter board here. Um, oh, another thing, an interesting thing I saw about this motherboard is it's so low power consumption... So what you have is you have two 12-volt wires here, and that's to power the CPU. Um, but it only even just uses one. So normally this would be like a 4-pin connector or like on a higher motherboard, uh, like an 8-pin connector. This thing actually has two, and it doesn't even fit. It fits like halfway on there like that. Crazy. All right. Yeah, a lot of little random options for like flat panel screens. That's what this thing was designed for, is flat panel screens. I'm not sure if I'm going into too much detail in this video, but look at the size of that center print. It's pretty thick. So I'm going to have to go to my power supply or AC adapter bin and find something that will work. Uh, I think I might go to a higher voltage. Um, just because I'd rather it would... I, I'm thinking it would consume less power versus going to a lower voltage, like 12. I can, if I can get it with like 19 or 18, like, like a laptop power supply, I think that might be actually better in the long run for power consumption. But like I said, I have my meter, and I'll know for sure. So, yeah, I always keep a box of old AC adapters because I work on a lot of laptops, you know. So I need to troubleshoot. I need to troubleshoot. All right, here's the AC adapter I found. It puts out 16 volt, so it's anywhere from nine to or eight to 19 volts input. 3.6 amps output to uh, 16 volt. So I'm thinking this should be more than enough here. Before you plug in a, a non power supply, you should always check the uh, output first. Make sure the player is correct too. Alright, so this is actually the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Just the parasitic draw on the AC adapter is 1.2 watt. So let's plug this in real fast. Let's see what it changes to. Yeah, you know what? Right. Get some power on. Yeah, I forgot there's no power button. Well, the power might be a power button on the front, but it's probably set to like AC restore auto on because it's a phone system. 
Okay, we'll have to fully boot in the windows. So before it's pulling about 31 watt, 30 to 31 watt with this power supply. I mean, once this thing is fully booted into Windows, I mean, that's a pretty good load on this on the system. Like, Windows is way more resource intensive than Linux. Like, with Linux, you don't have the whole GUI, you know, the whole GUI thing. I mean, you have services like the Apache web server and things like that. Send mail, different servers running in the background, but it's not the same as, like, a web GUI. Hey, take a look. So, it's running anywhere from 20 or 15 to 21 watts. So, that's a 10 watt parasitic draw on that power supply. Alright, here's the Windows 10 uh, task manager. I mean, just to run Windows with nothing running is taking 100% of the processor up. So this thing's at max load right now. I mean, it's not going to be the same for Linux. Like I said, Linux is not nearly as resource intensive, but I mean, look at that. I mean, I don't know what, what exactly is running in the background. And what's, what's using up all the CPU power? Anti-malware service... You know... Yeah. So I'm not going to have all that running. In the, well, I will have some anti-malware stuff in the, the firewall, but it's Linux-based. Linux is way more efficient. Alright, so it's going to be really interesting to see the difference between this and Linux. So we'll do another test. So I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to take out the power supply, clean up all the wires, the stuff that I don't use, and then uh, I'm going to wait for the network card to come tomorrow. Come on Amazon. Put a link down below if you want. I'll show it to you tomorrow. And then um, we'll do another full, uh, all, you know, another Linux-based test and see if it changes. It goes down to like 10 or 15 watt. That'd be cool. I forgot to mention this. If you want a really, a really energy efficient firewall and you don't need all the needs, you don't need all the bells and whistles of like a PFSense or a Sophos, um, you can actually run a project called OpenWRT. And it's basically a system on chip uh, version of Linux. And uh, actually, I've messed a lot with these different boards and custom projects. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is cool. You can even actually run a phone system with this thing. You can download Asterisk and run the, if the phone system in there. So that's really cool. But I need full version. So that's why I'm actually going to have to do this other stuff. All right, so I finally figured out what this thing was for. I mean, that's obviously a splitter. But this was actually feeding back into this bus, so they were actually feeding, they were back feeding power into the PCI bus. I mean, obviously to provide more power for the bus, but for what? For what reason? Um, so I might get rid of this just because I don't want another additional thing possibly pulling power. But, yeah, that's super interesting. Alright, so I'm really wondering about this thing right here. Because it's made by Digium. Specifically, it, it, Digium is a phone system, asterisk based phone system company. Installed hundreds of those phone systems. So there's actually no IC on this thing. So what is it doing? Is it just, is it just for, to draw power? Okay, I mean, like, what's the, because you would dig, I mean, this thing actually picks up from the USB. The LCD picks up, uh, you, can, you can run commands on it. So what will be the, uh, I'm going to take a closer, closer look at that. So it's just drawing power. Or can I, it's actually part of the USB bus. I don't know. I know this thing somehow communicated with the, the Linux kernel. And yeah, I thought it actually pulled like IP addresses and that kind of stuff off. So um, I'm going to look this part up and see what it actually does. But no IC, so who knows. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could put like a little wireless card in here if you want to do. And make it like a wireless access point too as well like integrated firewall with the access point but uh, I'm not going to need to do that so so like what I was saying you can actually put like a little wireless module, module in there and then see right there and you can put some antennas on there now uh, earlier versions of the Sophos uh, UTM you could actually create, I've actually done before an access point uh, integrated wireless access point but the Sophos XG they kind of got rid of that option, but if you were going to try to do the wireless access point thing, then you're going to want a, a Theros chipset. Intel chipsets don't work work right for as access points. You need to have like an Theros chipset. Alright, so 
printing out the uh, blank for the power supply connector. But I wanted to try, I wanted to see how much actually this wireless module pulls. I'm not actually I'm not going to run it in there um, because I have an external access point. But uh, I'm just curious to see how many watts this thing actually pulls if you wanted to actually uh, use onboard wireless. Yeah, it's really hard to tell for sure, but I feel like just by looking at it and just by judging, I feel like it take, takes about a half watt to about one watt. I, I, I'm assuming it would actually fluctuate depending on what you're doing with the wireless, you know, with the radio. But uh, obviously I'm not going to use it because I don't need it. But... All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have the, the NIC came in, the network card came in, and let me show it real fast. So I don't know exactly what they're doing, um, but I, I'm thinking they took the uh, Intel IC, or they got a, a lot of them or something like that, and redesigned cards around them because, I mean, obviously you'd want to use the original. I mean, you can get them on eBay for fourteen dollars. The original Intel server-based NICs with the dual uh, RD45s but uh, like I said mine didn't actually have the uh, PCI 8x slot here so I couldn't, couldn't get it in there but yeah it's a yeah the more processing you can do here the less processing you have to do here plus you know by having the same chipset it's gonna actually make the throughput a lot better less less resources less resource intensive so I'm gonna disable the onboard Intel NIC so I don't know if that's the actual NIC or the chipset I think that's the NIC um, but, uh, alright, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go into the BIOS, disable the wireless, install this card, and uh, see if it actually works and it's recognized in Windows. Once I get everything working fine in Windows 10, then I'll, you know, everything tested, then I'll, uh, because I'm still playing with the LCD here in the front, um, then I'll install the uh, Sophos UTM, or Sophos XG. But it's the same thing for PFSense, so I've done it in both. Alright, so on the uh, BIOS, I'm going to turn on, for some reason it was off. Intel Dynamic Power Technology, and where are we looking for? We're looking for the onboard devices. Disable the onboard NIC, and make sure everything else is disabled. That could SATA drives. Actually, I didn't forget to look at that. Should be ATI. The old. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm running the M SATA drive. Let's see video. Um, okay. Switch that. I wonder if I could mess around with the uh, onboard uh, shared video memory. I'm not going to be running a GUI, so I really don't need any video memory. Um, okay, let's just do that. So it showed up in the device manager as the uh, dual port ET. Um, so, yeah, they must have taken the chip and recreated a new PCB. Yeah, that's definitely not the Intel server base uh, adapter. So, All right, next step, finish the LCD. Ah, I forgot I had this thing, but this is another old Atom-based uh, firewall I had made a long, long time ago. I uh, can't remember if it was running PFSense or... Back then it was Sophos U... Or no, actually it was called a Staro back then. Before it was Sophos UTM or XG, it was called a Staro. So I think I was running a Staro on this a long, long time ago. But yeah, same thing, Intel Atom with the dual NIC. Um, yeah, it's funny, I can't believe I found this thing. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not sure if I show you this, but here is the uh, blanket there. i got to put the screws in there. But uh, I also noticed that the rack mounts I thought I had with this thing are not the right ones. So I might have to design some and 3D print some. I mean, I guess I could just put it on a shelf, but that looks doesn't look very good. So i got to make some measurements and... Um, yeah, like I said, it wouldn't be really hard to 3D print something. I mean, the case is not very heavy, so not too worried about that. So if you actually, if you're a fan of PF Sense, you should also look at Sophos uh, XG. Pretty nice. So booting that from the Lexar Flash here. Yeah, so this is not gonna be a video about installing Sophos. I think I made a video about that, but I mean, the purpose of this video is just to design a full-featured energy-efficient firewall.